Today I'm starting a small series of videos that dives into a hot topic. You see, there are rumors circulating within the community that certain companies or even entire countries keep treat steels worse than others. Is there any truth to that, or is it just another hot potato being tossed around amongst the Google experts? So grab your favorite knife and let's cut through some bullcrap. Ah, uh, Italian knives. They all look as if they were designed by Leonardo. Not this Leonardo, that Leonardo. To me, it seems every time an Italian knife designer sets out to design a knife, he targets seemingly impossible goals, like combining modern functionality with timeless classical styling. To an Italian designer, balance is everything, not only mechanically, but also aesthetically speaking, as proven by Michele Pensato, also known as Moletta, in this Lion's Steel Skinny. And the internal designers for Lion's Steel are no slouches either, as they have clearly proven in the design of this two and a half inch bladed Nano that feels like a much larger blade when in hand. All Italian knife companies are known for their collaboration with prominent designers. In this MKM Pocket Tango, Dave Anderson and Igor Barticelli combined functionality of NASMAC blade with elegance of traditional Italian knife. Sometimes, though, they're not afraid to step away from traditional styling, like in this Yipper designed by Ben Pedersen of NAFS. Viper Valley was designed by Jasper Boxnitz of Denmark. Nickname Vox. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing some of these names. Anyway, this is as classic as a frame lock gets because it's combining satin finish on the blade with mill walnut on the handle. And speaking of materials and execution, except for maybe the Yipper, all these knives give you a feeling of being handcrafted. Or dare I say, custom made knives. The blade to handle ratio is maximized, the blades are centered. One can't help having this premium feeling when holding a Maniago Italy product in their hands. Città del Colterieri, city of knife makers, that's what the city sign says. And uh, here's a sculpture of somebody forging a blade and a views of the city for your enjoyment. The modern building on the bottom left is the headquarters for the consortium. Oh, by the way, I tested all of them pretty harshly on my channel with zero failures, all of which is documented pretty well in my playlist called Torture Tests. Even the seemingly simple fixed blade is constructed to the best engineering practices, and all these knives have a killer ergonomics. And here's the thing. I could be making videos about Benchmade and Spyderco knives week after week and get a lot more views than I get on reviewing Italian knives. But let me tell you, if you are trying to save money, don't touch these knives. If you hold them in your hand, you'll probably end up spending money. And while many reviewers call them gentlemen's knives, what they mean is those are Italian gentlemen who you wouldn't want to corner in a dark alley somewhere. These knives definitely carry this character. Again, maybe except for the Ypres. But lately, I see Ben Pedersen venturing into a more classical styling with his fixed blade series. And so I'm hoping some of that will carry over into his folding designs. And Moletta, he seems to me like a disciple of Bob Terzuola, whose school of thought is just because something is beautiful and functional doesn't mean it can't be also lethal. And also in the realm of impossible, Lion still sets out to meet all the European knife laws when they design their knives. And that's why both the Nano in my hand here and the Skinny have removable flipper tabs. What I'm not on board with is when Lion still collaborates with Spyderco. Maybe because they are also trying to combine the impossibility of elegance and a bump for a spidey hole as you've seen in my recent short video. Here is uh, Nano next to Spy Nano on the bottom and Skinny next to Slim on the top. By the way, both of them ended up being Spyderco sprint runs that did not sell out in hours. Before we embark on hardness test to confirm or bust the myth of softly heat-treated Italian blades, 
Let's spend a couple of minutes talking about something that was kind of bugging me in the back of my mind. Sorry about this interlude, but I self-sponsor my channel. I don't take affiliation with knife companies. And to help me, I provide affiliate links to the tools that I use. I recently switched to using Hoto multi-bit driver sets, and uh, the link to them will be in the description. Watching Ben Peterson's video about what it means to say made in the USA, I also learned that a lot of other countries have much less strict regulations when they say made in, say, Italy or Germany and Spain. Scales, the assembly tools, pivot hardware, bearings, are they Italian made? And speaking of the assembly tool, I get a kick out of multifunctionality of the Nanos tool because it has not only screwdriver bits, but also a wrench for the pocket clip screw and little holes to set your body screws while you're cleaning your knife so you don't lose them. A gimmick? Perhaps, but I love it. It's just cool to me. The rest of the hardware is basic standard hardware that you find on most knives, even the ones coming out of China, which begs the question, again, do they source all their parts in Italy or are we buying plenty of Chinese content here? And does it really matter? I would like to hear your opinion in the comments. The tool for skinny is a little bit less impressive, but still very functional. And if you are targeting uh, spider versions of these knives, they do not come with a disassembly tool. Ben, I'm wondering if you're watching my videos. So if you are, please let us know if these bearings are sourced outside Italy. No matter where they came from, the hardware is of highest quality that I've seen on knives sourced anywhere. And the disassembly reassembly was extremely easy, even in the case of the integral skinny. Question for the community. How do you guys feel about canvas micarta? Are you all okay with it absorbing your body oils? And would you like to know how to clean it? If I have time, I'll put it at the end of the video. For now, we're jumping into the calibration verification of my benchtop Rockwell tester. If you are a regular viewer on my channel, you know that I do that before every test just to make sure I'm not providing incorrect information. I measured 61.9 HRC, which matches 62 HRC rating that came with this serialized NIST certified calibration block. I am going to start the test with a pocket tango fixed blade because I featured it in several videos and no matter whether I used a Lieb rebound tester or Rockwell benchtop test, it always came out between 61.8 and 62.7. In my regular review videos, I test each blade three times to get an average, but 61.9 is right in that range, so I'm moving on to the next knife, which is MKM Yipper. This one came out of the first production batch and had zero mechanical issues, although second batch had some concerns which were then addressed in the third and the fourth batch. Facts that you can find from Ben Patterson's videos on NAF's channel. We're about to find out the hardness of this blade. I am getting 59.3 HRC, which is lower than I was hoping for. But despair not, sometimes when you switch between blades, the first poke comes out a little lower. That's why I'm repeating the test now. The targeted range for MagnaCut, according to Crucible website, was 60 to 62 HRC. But the creator of MagnaCut, Dr. Laren Thomas, numerous videos and articles has recommended 62 to 65 HRC. And now we got 60.9 HRC, which is a significant jump of one point. So we'll poke it the third time in our pursuit of truth. Magna Cut hardness wars are still raging in the knife enthusiast community, even though we all understand that the edge geometry means a lot more than hardness. And in this case, it's now at 60.8. And while I would say that 
60 to 61 is not optimal for edge retention and toughness, corrosion resistance is at its max in this range. And now let's put Lion Steel Nano on the test block. I tested this one previously using Leap Tester and I got over 62 HRC. Let's see if it was right or wrong. Leap Tester is what made my channel controversial and I got 61.9. So the controversy with Leap was it gave me erroneously low results in testing some of the blades. I am still developing a theory of why it happened and narrowing it down to a very specific measurable parameters that will explain a lot of it. But in the case of this knife, I'm getting the same result as I did with the Leap, as you can see on the screen. Moving on to Lion Steel Skinny, which is uh, the latest Italian knife that I bought. Let's see if things improved over the last two years as far as getting it up in the hardness range. What's funny, no matter how many times the metallurgy and blade making experts say that the edge geometry is more important by a huge factor than the hardness, 60.1 in this case, mm. <laughs> knife enthusiasts in their predominant majority push companies to in turn push the hardness of their blades to the maximum possible range. And it's doubly puzzling in case of MagnaCut because its toughness and edge retention change by very little compared to other steels when you go from 62 to say 65. 60.1 in this case again. And the corrosion resistance, stainlessness, actually decreases at higher ranges. Next blade on the block is Viper Valle. And um, it's a yet another company which is a part of Maniago Knife Maker Consortium. Maniago is a small town in northern Italy where a lot of knife making companies are located. And I'm waving this test off uh, because I went past the red dot on a small handle, um, which means I have to redo the entire poke now. So no result yet. So I'm wondering if each company heat treats their own blades or is there a central heat treatment facility in Maniago where all of them go? 61 HRC is the first good test for this blade. We're going for another one. That would be an important bit of knowledge because that would explain consistency from blade to blade. So far, we only got two above 61. I'm getting 60.8 on the second poke here. And this is enough to tell us the tale. So I wrapped up uh, the test uh, before 15 minutes was up. And uh, that's why I am going to include my Carter cleaning procedure that I use at my house at the end of the video. So what we learned today is that three out of five blades tested came under the range that is recommended by Dr. Laren Thomas, and the other two came just on the lower side of that range. What is important for me to point out is even though I'm using industry standard test equipment, I am not a certified laboratory and I am not using industry standard tests because industry standard tests to determine the hardness of the batch of the blades would require a minimum of five samples tested. And I am here testing one of each blade. So not an industry standard, draw your own conclusions. Hopefully the irony of using the espresso machine to clean Italian knives doesn't escape you. Here is the before. As you can see, plenty of greasy residue. And now I'm steaming it. Don't forget to wear protective glasses when you do that. Pocket Tango needed to be cleaned as well. Here's a before and after for the Nano. Before on the right, after on the left. And because I often use my pocket knives for food prep, I'm using this butcher block oil or gel to permeate the micarta on the handle that prevents bacteria from forming colonies on your knife. It's a food safe substance, link will be in the description. Here's the after. And I did the same to the pocket tangle.